All right, guys, this is our stage two, technically stage four at the match. Scenario, SAS entry teams train two round target engagements, single shot to the body, followed by a single shot to the head. Start, standing behind the start table of your choice, left or right, handgun loaded and holstered, rifle loaded and held at low ready. At signal, shooter will engage one paper target with their rifle through each window. There are three windows, therefore there are three paper targets. Also through the hallway, so four paper targets total. Three windows, one hallway. Ground rifle on opposite table, transition to their handgun, then proceed down the hallway and engage steel targets from the hallway. Do not engage the steel targets with your rifle, that's a bad thing. Paper targets are scored with the best hit on the body and the best hit on the head. You need at least one hit in the body and at least one hit on the head. If you don't have one in each, you'll get a mic. Falling steel must fall and static steel must be hit at least once for score. The steel replicates the same body and headshot. Right, the steel replicates the same procedure, which is one falling steel, one headshot. Stand by! Nice. All right, so we just completed stage, well, our stage two, technically stage four of the match, but our second stage of the day. Yep. This is an up close and personal one that uh, mimics some of the SAS tactics where they put at least one round into the body and one round into the head. You mean four rounds in the body and five rounds in the head. I put a lot of rounds everywhere. So why don't we talk about that? So, yeah, it's interesting. You crushed me by like 12 seconds, which is like 35% of the score mm -hmm. overall. Um, and in retrospect, the reason is I was being too careful. You were aiming. Uh, yeah. And at that guy, some of those targets were at like five yards. Didn't there was one that aim. was back at 20. Yeah. Yeah. One of them was long, but the others were quite close and you don't need to aim. And if, if I had thought of, you know, in retrospect, of course, having 30 rounds, four targets, why not just blam, 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 blam. Instead of what I did was fire one and then assess and make sure it hit. What you did was fire five and just be confident enough in your skill to know that at least one of them got where it needed to to score. There's a lot of low recoil ass kicking in this magazine. <laughs> yes, there is. And this is, I think, um, not a training scar because we talked about this in the M1 gear and time rifle prime trial test. Back in the day when you had an eight round M block clip or a 10 round magazine and you were shooting 308 or eight millimeter Mauser, that every round counts thing makes sense because you diminish your ammunition so rapidly that you can't recover from it. Right. When, and you have a lot more time between shots. However, the fluidity and dynamics of the battlefield has changed. And the ability of even a very, very excellent marksman to get a single shot hit on a running man at 300 yards is possible, mm -hmm. but highly unlikely. It's just, it's not a real, I'm not saying you haven't done it if you're out there and done it, but it's not common. Right. When you've got 30 rounds of ass kicking in this, Give them a bunch. If it's up close, get a really, I mean, I'm talking ghost ring sight picture with the red dot, blast. Blast them. First of all, what if the first one didn't have terminal effect? The second one might. And on paper, you blast enough, you're gonna get your hit. Right. And I do not have an ammunition resupply problem. <laughs> so this is taken in context. Right. If you're out in the field and you've got two mags, okay, that's different. But if you've got ammunition on hand, use it. Yeah. In fact, it's, if one considers that in, let's say, Soviet service, this style of rifle was developed to replace the submachine gun, mm -hmm. close range, treat it like a submachine gun. That's true, although I do not think you need full auto. No, I agree. But what I'm saying is instead of treating it like a rifle, bang, hit, bang, hit, treat it like a sub gun, which is bang, 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 then check it. On the Tavor note, I have to say, um, I am st not really holding you back as much as you don't like it. 
I might be eating my words at the intro. Be very interesting to find out. There's issues about the gun that I don't think I'll ever warm up to, but in terms of handling it on the clock, it handles pretty well. Well, certainly this stage was a particularly good example for a short and maneuverable carbine. But we just came off our 200 yard stage and it did not hold me back. That's true, you did quite well there too. So uh, more to come, we got two more stages to go, but at this moment, I'm like, hmm, it'll be an interesting conclusion. Yeah, all right, let's keep going. Stage three.